Welcome to topic 12, in which we're going to look at vibronic spectroscopy. When an electronic excitation occurs, so if you excite an electron from, for example, a bonding orbital to an antibonding orbital, the equilibrium structure of the molecule may change significantly. So in this case, in this example, you'd expect a bond to get much longer. So this can cause vibrational excitations at the same time. Detailed selection rules for electronic transitions are quite complicated, so we're not going to worry about those for this course. What we are interested in, though, however, are the selection rules for the vibrations within a vibronic transition. The selection rule for this is very simple. So basically, any value of delta V is allowed. So we're allowed 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 3, 4, and so on. And that this means that if you measure um, an electronic spectrum, there's going to be a whole series of vibrational lines within it. To understand what's going on to under, to, to in a spectrum, to start analysing the peaks, it's always useful to draw a diagram. So we can draw a Morse curve here for the ground state, which we call X. And within this ground state, there are vibrational energy levels, which we're going to label V double primed, equals it to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. When you excite an electron, you go from this ground electronic state to an excited electronic state, B, which also has vibrational energy levels, V primed equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. In this lower diagram, I've also added in the zero-point energy, which we've talked about before, and then various definitions of the dissociation energy of the molecule. We can then get transitions between, for any value of delta V, so for example we can go from V double primed equals 0 to V primed equals 3. And this will rep then represent and correspond to a peak in a spectrum. So if we measure a, an electronic spectrum and we can expect to observe many vibrational transitions at the same time. So from a vibronic spectrum, it's possible to calculate all sorts of things at the same time. We can get vibrational information, we can potentially get rotational information, and we can get other information such as the dissociation energy of the molecule. A classic example of this is using the vibronic spectrum of I2 to calculate the dissociation of the iodine molecule. This here is the UV visible spectrum of iodine, so there are lots of peaks in here. And each of these peaks correspond to a particular vibrational transition um, within the molecule. So if you were to measure a spectrum like this, you need to work out what all these peaks correspond to. And you can do this on a, on a diagram. Once you've worked out this, you can use what's called a birch sponer extrapolation to calculate useful things. So by comparing transitions which have common vibrational energy levels, it's possible to calculate energy gaps between levels. Let's draw a diagram so we can see what's going on. If, for example, in a spectrum we can work out which peak is the transition from V double primed equals 0 to V primed equals 3, that's one peak, and find another peak which corresponds to V double primed equals 1 going up to V primed equals 3, so they here these two peaks share the common um, state V prime equals 3. We can work out, we can measure off the spectrum the wave number of these transitions and if we subtract one from the other that gives us this energy gap here between V equals 0 and V equals 1 in the ground electronic state. So take one, subtract the other, gives us this energy gap. We can do this for lots of pairs of transitions in the spectrum so we can work out what this next energy gap here is and then this next energy gap here and so on all the way up. So we can eventually work out what the dissociation energy is. This gap is eventually going to go to zero because we know that the vibrational energy levels of a molecule converge as you go to large V and that's because it's an anharmonic system. 
we can plot we can plot this data so if you do a plot of the vibrational term for v equals 1 and the vibrational term for v well sorry the vibrational term for v equals 1 minus the vibrational term for v against v plus 1 you can get a plot like this so these points as you go down here each point is the gap between two adjacent energy levels and you, so you can see the gap between them gets smaller and smaller and you can extrapolate this to this intercept and this intercept effectively gives you your highest vibrational quantum number that exists for that molecule so by getting this data plotting this plot you can work out what the highest allowed highest possible v value is once you've plotted this graph and done the extrapolation you can calculate the area under this graph and this gives you the dissociation energy of the molecule d0 so by doing an electronic spectrum measuring an electronic spectrum by analyzing the peaks you can get the dissociation energy this is quite this is quite um, incredible and very useful to find out more about the Birch Boner extrapolation have a look at um, the text by Hollis or Atkins and you can read more about them there okay some homework for you there's some sections in Housecroft and Constable to read there's a box to read and then some questions to have a go at too that brings us to the end of this course on molecular spectroscopy so as a summary, you should now have an understanding of the theory behind a number of molecular spectroscopic, spectroscopic techniques. In particular, global and specific selection rules, factors that affect the appearance of spectra, such as anharmonicity, the effect of temperature, um, and so on, the effect of degeneracy of energy levels. And you now should be able to apply your knowledge of spectroscopy in order to analyse different types of spectra and extract molecular data from them. In particular, you should now be ready to apply your knowledge in workshops, a tutorial and in the practical course later this term. That brings us to the end of this topic and the end of this course.